So almost every painting that I make starts with a photograph that I have first taken. Um, as in this case, this picture was uh, taken by me at the farmer's market in Ilhaus in uh, Bahia, Brazil. And um, I felt really compelled to paint it. So the first thing I do is I uh, upload the photograph into my uh, image processing software, which in my case, I used to use Photoshop, but I now use Affinity Photo. And I find that to be uh, just as good. And it's instead of paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you pay a small fee per year and it's yours. Um, so with this photograph uploaded, the next thing I do is I create a grid and I get the view uh, setting to display the grid for me. The idea being that you can then draw the same grid on your work surface. And once you've done that, you can copy grid for grid or square for square everything that you see here uh, onto your work surface and that way there's no guesswork involved in uh, where the face goes, where the hands go, where the fish go uh, and so on and so forth. This grid method has been used by artists going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before the advent of today's technology. So if you really want to be a true artist you have to know how to use the grid method. Let's get started. Because this painting has elements that uh, some I'm going to discard uh, and it's not going to be part of my painting, but others are a necessity. So for example, you've got six squares on the vertical side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And because the top of the uh, guy's head falls at square number one, and uh, the bottom of this fish uh, falls in square number six. I'm going to need uh, my canvas to be at least six squares high. So this is my canvas. I'm going to need for this to be at least six squares high so I can fit the guy and I can fit the, uh, the tail of the fish. Then I just got to figure out where I want to crop this picture. So I'm going to probably crop it like so maybe. That means I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight squares going across from right to left. And then I've got to draw eight squares here. And then whatever I don't want to use, I just ignore. And I just focus on whatever's in my eight squares that are horizontal and the six squares that are vertical. And this way I can hand draw everything from this photograph to this canvas and we've got everything in the right proportions. So now that I've got eight columns going down this way and I've got six rows going this way, let's take a look at the photograph. I have now taped off the edges of the photograph that no longer apply. I've decided that I want to place the grid so that the man resides in column number seven. So column number seven would be corresponding to right about here. So this is where the face is going to be uh, and, the, and the fish are going to be at the bottom of, uh, what is that, four, five, six, or four, five, six, seven. So I'll just go to four, five, six, seven at the bottom of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the easiest thing on this grid. I'm going to start with placing the fish uh, in the corresponding columns over here and then work my way up from the bottom and I'll end up with my focal point which is this man and I intend to put some backlight on him and this gentleman as well and also on the fish uh, but this man is the focal point of this entire painting so let's see the man resides in um, seven so he's a little bit over here his face ends right there and he's towards the middle so this is where he resides right there I'm just going to shade him off because details are not necessary this is just blocking simply blocking so the man is there now his shoulder comes like this drops down right here crosses that one 
right about there is his arm, which then comes down that way and ends right there somewhere. Oops, we are too fat. Brazilians are fit, especially these kind of guys that work hard for a living. Fishermen, these guys are fit, they're eating healthy, they're waking up at the crack of dawn to go catch their fish. There's not an ounce of fat on these guys. In my next life, I think I want to be a fisherman. All right, so here we go. That's the second arm coming down. So the grip method is amazing. Um, it has never let me down and I've done a lot of portraits. If you look at my website, I've done a lot of portraits over the years um, and I'm starting to get away from that as I focus more and more on this kind of work because my game plan eventually is to teach um, online classes um, and possibly even host workshops uh, here in Brazil for people who want to come visit beautiful Brazil and uh, at the same time attend you know a week or two week long workshop with me um, you know and we can set it up in such a way that some of it is in one place uh, some of it is in another place etc right, so the, this thing okay so there's another horizontal line that goes like so parallel to this guy. I cannot use the ruler right now because the dog, Nino, my dog is sitting in my lap. And he's kind of comfortable and half asleep. I don't want to mess with his comfort. And those of you that have pets, you know exactly what I mean. Uh, I'm just enjoying him sitting in my lap. So this gentleman is wearing a hat. So let's kind of suggest the peak of the hat is there and of course I'm not going to give any details on his eyes but that's where he's kind of looking in that direction so we've got this focal point now there I'm not going to mess with details those can be painted in later on uh, there's a bit of a like an upside down sink or something right there and now it's kind of focus on the other gentleman and then the composition is pretty much uh, going to be done for me. So let's see, he starts in number three and uh, he's at the bottom of exactly the same square where this guy is. So this head, because he's bowing down, he's looking down, he's looking down at one of the knives or something, that's right here. like so and the peak of his cap points downwards and it goes kind of like so all right then you don't see his face much you're just gonna see his neckline so that's what that looks like and then his shoulder comes off like so dips into four and then kind of goes straight down And his arm kind of begins there and so that's his arm right there so these here are my painting supplies this is my gouache kit um, I use a couple of these very tiny bottles of water that way if I need to go paint outdoors someplace these transport very easily um, I use three brushes, a medium round, a very, very tiny round, a flat brush, and I use the 8B graphite pencil to draw. I carry a small ruler, and I carry this thing as well, which is really designed to highlight, well, not highlight, it's designed to correct typographical errors, but this is awesome for uh, 
drawing highlights on your finished work. Um, let me tell you another about this tin. I had no use for water soluble color pencils, but I bought this tin uh, to use for storage and also to use as a mixing surface. This way I can get paint from here, put it on here, mix it, and then put it onto my uh, painting. But I love the look of this. Don't you think that looks awesome? <laughs> so my, my uh, water soluble pencils are just lying around. I, I have no use for them. Maybe at some point I'll use them. But I love this thing that they came in. I think it's made in Switzerland. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm sure. Yeah, it is Swiss made. <laughs> I, I know I paid a premium for this tin, but hey, that's the artist in me. You know, eccentrics. <laughs> so in addition to my gouache, I also use watercolors and this is a very small watercolor kit consisting of 12 colors uh, and these are really all the colors that I use. Sometimes I use even less than 12. As you can see this one I barely touch, that's yellow ochre. Um, and the ones that I tend to use a lot is um, lemon yellow hue. Um, cadmium yellow hue. Um, I use my blues a lot. Uh, I love this color which is uh, a lizard and crimson hue. Um, and then this one is, uh, actually this is gouache, this is not gouache. This, this is a watercolor set but when, when I run out of colors sometimes I'll put gouache in there. So this is cerulean blue and this corner right here is gouache. Um, so between this and my dedicated gouache set um, I'm a very happy camper. So this here is the finished piece. Now even though there wasn't uh, any sign on the back of the fisherman, I just decided to uh, use my artistic license and add uh, Casa do Pesce in the back, which basically in Portuguese means uh, the house of fish. Hey guys, thank you for watching and taking the time to go through this video. I hope you learned something and if you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment because I love to read your comments and respond back to you. If you think you know someone that could uh, enjoy this kind of video, please share it with them. Till again, as I say in Brazil, ciao ciao.